So we're here to discuss dyslexia, and this is my personal interaction paper. As an introduction, I have not had my own personal experience or family experience with a specific learning diagnosis. Just what I know from school and my own um, classroom experience and from TV or the news. But with having read the reading assignments and watching the um, video, I feel like my understanding has certainly um, grown and it's awakened um, other parts that may have forgotten. So I'll be discussing some um, of my prior knowledge of dyslexia um, and what the effects of these new understandings have had on me and consider how this knowledge can change my approach in my own teaching as learning, um, as well as the spiritual changes it has had on me. So before thinking or writing this, um, this paper, I did not have much more than the basic knowledge that we get in school and experience about dyslexia. My introduction to special ed, as you know, was so long ago, decades away. Um, I do just know that dyslexia, it was a um, flipping of letters, letter reversals, um, uh, parts of words missing, whole words, movement of letters or words on a page, text that might not stand still, and I might even be mixing two different um, learning disabilities um, there. So my knowledge, um, it really isn't that, that great about it. Um, I do know that regardless, reading development is far more difficult, taxing on these readers um, hard on their confidence and their spirit um, and slows their pace and progress um, for comprehension and might even, you know, set them behind. Um, so since dyslexia involves the difficulty to read, interpret words, letters, sounds, um, I was reminded that it does not affect the general intelligence. It's a neurobiological disorder affecting one in 10 people. Um, and some things that um, spoke to me most was that it's of all cultures and all languages, young and continues even for the older people. Um, it was eye-opening to me beyond our own United States borders. I, I don't feel like I've thought further than that or past that um, regarding learning disabilities in other languages. So I think of my own classroom of 24, and if it's one out of 10 students, I'd have at least two who are affected um, by such a disability. After viewing Journey into Dyslexia, um, it was really just overwhelming to be presented with the amount of attention, the amount of strategies, the understanding, um, the positivity that is needed by students on a daily basis. It might seem simple, um, but so hard to also do, especially with the human condition that, that we have. Um, sometimes I feel like I, it, it affects their intelligence, or maybe if they did try harder, it would be different. Um, and I have to remind myself that that's not um, the case. And no two students, even with dyslexia, are alike at all. They don't present with the same difficulties. They could have um, overlapping elements that um, take effect, like the uh, ADHD, um, processing problems, memory problems. So there's so much more that can go into it besides just um, just dis the dyslexia. Our brains are so complex. What pained me most was to hear um, what students endure and what they put on themselves to um, 
to have this experience in their lives. Um, lack of knowledge on our part or understanding of these disabilities is, is just not an excuse. It is a responsibility to be informed and equipped. Um, that is really significant. And it was mentioned in the Journey to Dyslexia that if we don't honor and address these areas for these students, it really is a matter of their civil rights. And I connected with that because I'm teaching um, government in our fourth grade unit uh, about the first 10 amendments and the um, being the Bill of Rights. And, and really everyone has um, that, that unspoken um, right to be treated properly, no matter how abled or, or not um, they might be. Um, what I did like was to hear so many speakers refer to the dyslexia as, as a gift, um, although that may come after so, so much endurance of, of challenges and, and bad feelings. Um, in the brain, um, I liked how they talked about uh, an awakening to the different parts of the brain that compensate for and light up and work harder uh, and make better connections um, while the disability doesn't um, or causes the brain not to work in one particular area. Um, I also appreciated and, and want to call them they're not lesser parts, they're not better parts, Every, they're just different parts uh, of our brain and it does not affect how intelligent a person is. Um, on a personal note, uh, I really think about the number of children over the years that I've taught or that have been in my classroom that have been um, that have experienced what the students in these videos um, and chapters we've read, what they must have felt, um, and questions I have are, was I aware of their difficulties? Did I see their pain? Was my teaching of any help to them, or was I merely another person who didn't understand and made them feel less than or anything um, but a capable person of learning um, in my own human condition and frustrations? Was I the cause of any of that pain? All the strategies and methods are sound and reasonable, and they seem to be uncomplicated, um, but it's challenging. Um, and I know I'm hardest on myself about, am I enough? Am I doing enough? Um, but I realized, too, that if I were a special education teacher, rather than general ed, I would have fewer students, and they would already be identified, and I could be helping in a different um, sort of way rather than just general education. Um, and it did remind me of our first class and how UDL um, can be such a great thing to maximize um, our power in general education. Um, so largely for me, I'm thinking about perspective. Um, and in a public school, perspective and balance are, are the words I think of. But when I infuse my faith, I really think about grace um, and the gifts that he has given us. Um, and given me to provide for um, students in the classroom. Um, so I hold my students just as dear as, as he holds me and he holds them, and he's equipped me to be accountable for them. Um, I also think about and tie in the fact that that's why I'm back in school at this age, um, and lighting a fire um, again to help our help my students as much as I need help um, and that we can work on that every day uh, as I deepen my relationship with God um, and and he challenges me um, to rise to the occasion and and use the gifts and talents so my favorite um, Psalms and scriptures are mainly songs <laughs> that I love to listen to. So if I fix my eyes daily, um, then 
I can better be equipped um, to to be that person for for my students, be the boots on the ground, and not letting um, weakness define any of my students um, or myself, but in every effort to honor God and the gifts that he has given us all and the relationships um, that we build together while doing so um, are paramount, are the most important. Um, so with that, I'll stop talking, but I will play for you my favorite song that goes with it. <laughs> These are the things we do differently, right? <laughs> All right, guys, talk to you on the discussion board.